in order for the transition of IP networks uh, to NGN to be fully successful, we have to understand, we have to treat this IP network like a career grade network. A career grade network is the one that involves certain guarantees. So, IP based environment has to adopt to the carrier grade open environment requirements. We'll see what necessitates openness, what are the compliance requirements. Uh, we look at the um, ecosystem of this open environment. We'd look at different kinds of providers. And finally, we'd look at the carrier grade open environment reference model. So, why do we need openness? Traditional networks like uh, PSTN, PMLMN, uh, and other kinds of networks like ports, they lack openness in their solution because they had been closed systems to begin with. But we can't afford that to happen in um, IP networks, especially once we want to transition into um, next generation network. So there is a concept that we need to understand, which is what is going to be the relationship of uh, the paraphernalia, the equipment, the hardware, the software, all known as the COTS, commercially off the shelf components, which are readily available in the market. How can we allow these components to be reutilized, re engineered for the creation of different platforms, networks, and applications, all complying to NGN? For that, carrier grade open environment reference model is defined. It addresses all the concerns which are based on COTS component and corresponding standards which are accepted by the industry for implementing NGN. The compliance requirements that courts have to fulfill are defined by the career grade requirements. The first one is, for instance, high performance. How many massive simultaneous sessions could be handled? What is the availability? Five nines? Five nines actually turns out to be like five minutes downtime a year or even six nines or maybe higher scalability that is to move from small network to a very large network with a lot of um, diversity in hardware in coverage in user base etc etc then the hardware changes uh, how courts have to be cognizant or aware of the hardware changes, then software updates, um, uniform and efficient management of courts is going to be a very important concern under this um, uh, CGOE um, reference model. Then protocol adaptation, that is how existing protocols could be as smoothly as possible tailored to uh, become workable with uh, courts. Then the controlled life cycle, that is when a certain uh, court um, is commissioned, it is used, then it needs to be retired, that is it is reaching the end of its life cycle. Then without having any impact on a live network performance, how can we remove it and plug in a new um, uh, commercially off the shelf component? Then there's a requirement on part of courts to be uh, rapidly deployable and should be available for different uh, rigorous testing conditions. And last but not the least, all of these requirements have to be met at extremely high cost efficiency. The courts providers are not necessarily what we would assume as someone who sells uh, equipment as in hardware or software like a vendor, but there is an abstraction to it. Uh, the abstraction actually is termed as the 
way we are looking at the providers in a more structured manner while keeping their internals as um, translucent as possible. So first we have the service providers. These are responsible for delivery of services to the end users. Then we have the solution providers, which deliver the solution building blocks, uh, which essentially is used for providing these services. And the infrastructure that runs these services is managed by the technology providers to deliver the functional components to the service providers. The COTS ecosystem is a very important concept because with regards to career grade open environment, we have to look at the coverage or scope of COTS. COTS essentially includes everything like networking platform, software and hardware platforms, uh, then different functions, for instance, session management function, event handling functions, um, then the overall management infrastructure and corresponding open interfaces, and very importantly, the security concerns and the carrier grade performance ensuring functions. Now, all these uh, are embodied as the cost a courts ecosystem. We are now moving to the reference component model. The details of it can be found um, in, in text, uh, but for brevity, we'll say that uh, uh, we have a layered architecture in which we have a top layer uh, that is industry specific carrier grade open environment. That is, whatever applications the industry is going to offer to the end users in NGN. Then the bottom is basically the industry agnostic environment. So industry in NGN doesn't bother about what hardware or what software or what network architecture is being deployed for as long as it is meeting the industry, uh, the, the end user requirement specific uh, features. So uh, we have the application layer, we have the operating platforms and we have the server hardware. Uh, the applications could be categorized into further three types. Uh, we have the control plane applications like uh, call processing language. Uh, we have the management uh, uh, plane applications for, for uh, development and optimization of the components. And then we have the service plane applications. The service plane applications are the ones which are going to be incorporated like short message service center, content delivery network, web portals, file servers, etc. Then we have the uh, operating platforms and server hardware. We'll just look at all this through this reference model. Uh, so we have the applications that all, already discussed here. For the sake of interest, we have the operations and management and provisioning of application services, basic networking application services, and portal. Within the operating platform, we have a lot of courts uh, that could be incorporated at this particular layer. For instance, gateway protocol stacks. Whenever a certain NGN is going to talk to another NGN, it's going to incorporate a gateway. So it means what protocol stacks are available for implementing gateway out there in the market. Uh, then let's take the example of database middleware. Uh, how database middleware allows us to connect a certain component or group of components to the backend database. And then we have uh, Java services, uh, remote API services, data model services. Now, uh, this, this is a pretty exhaustive list. But for the sake of convenience, you can understand that operating platform is the environment in which a certain type of uh, 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 commercially off-the-shelf component is going to be executed. And then we have the uh, hardware, the paraphernalia, including the servers, the networking equipment, routers, switches, their specifications, and their corresponding drivers, which could be installed in a variety of end-user equipment.